Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me today. And today, we'll be reviewing Hearts of Iron 4 Waking the Tiger, the next expansion pack for Hearts of Iron 4, releasing March 8th, 2018, for $20 in your respective currency. First up, let's talk about the new features the expansion specifically brings. We have new focus trees for Nationalist China, the People's Republic of China, and the Warlord cliques. In addition, we have alternate history focus trees for the Empire of Japan and Germany that range anywhere from restoring the German Empire and placing the Kaiser back as leader of Germany, to going communist as Japan and reproaching with the Soviet Union. New features also include the addition of gainable and assignable traits and characteristics to your field marshals and generals from a new commander overview screen, which allows you to tailor commanders to specific functions such as fortress busting, planning operations quickly, or increasing their ability to entrench. In addition, there are new command power abilities, such as Force Attack or Last Stand, which provide divisions and armor groups with very unique bonuses at the cost of a new resource, Command Power. This resource is needed to activate commander power abilities and assign and customize commanders and their traits. Along with the expansion are many new and unique decisions added to the new, free decision tree that is being implemented in the patch accompanying Waking the Tiger. Although the decision mechanic itself is free, there are a host of decisions that are exclusive to the expansion, such as forming countries like the Roman Empire and Grand Columbia, special projects such as excavating for resources in unique parts of the world, and flavor decisions for countries like Japan that simulate the inter-service rivalry between the army and navy. Unique acclimatization is another feature of the expansion, with troops accustomed to the winter now donning winter uniforms and desert troops donning desert shorts and brimmed hats. In addition, it is now possible to capture enemy equipment in battle, send attaches to other nations to benefit their and your armed forces, prioritize what target strategic bombers should strike, and a new consolidate forces mechanic to consolidate understrength regiments to save on equipment and retain veterancy. Lastly, some of the larger and more notable features of the expansion include the ability to assign insignias to armies, a toggleable mini-map, border conflicts with unique mechanics for battling over certain states and parts of the world like China, new 3D models, sounds, music, and voiceover work for countries like China, and 18 new achievements. So, after discussing all the new features, it's time for the verdict. What is the expansion like, and is it worth it? Well, as far as my gameplay experience, I played as the three main countries affected in the expansion, Nationalist China, Imperial Germany, and Japan. I failed miserably at trying to stave off the Japanese as China, I got bogged down in China as Japan, and I reformed the German Empire as Germany and defeated a common turn consisting of the Soviet Union and the French Commune and aligned with the British Empire by late 1942. For Nationalist China and Japan, I gotta admit, there was a lot of new content and flavor. The decisions and national focus trees really give you some flexibility to change the course of the game and the Second World War, and it's not difficult to go down an alternate history path like aligning Nationalist China with the Soviet Union or turning Imperial Japan into a democracy or even turning to the Shogunate. The same goes for Germany, although it feels different compared to China and Japan because a lot of Germany's neighbors haven't necessarily had new flavor or significant changes added or made. The new flexibility does exist for Germany, but in my opinion, it wasn't as substantial as countries like China or Japan, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily need to be. The expansion is titled Waking the Tiger, after all. As someone who is critical of Hearts of Iron 4 to its core, I have to admit I had a fun few hours with the Waking the Tiger expansion. Getting stomped as China and being bogged down in China as Japan is likely due to my being out of practice with the game than problems with the mechanics of the expansion. I particularly had a very good time as Germany, although the fun was short and sweet, as World War II was essentially over by late 1942 for me, with a renewed German Empire allied to the British, one of the superpowers of the world. Which brings me to my concern with this expansion. I fear that even with all the new flavor for China, Germany, and Japan, this expansion doesn't bring enough to the table to keep players captivated in the long term, especially at a price tag of $20. Sure, the new alternate history focus trees and the decisions are great, but I'm concerned with how you, the player and consumer, feels after having played several campaigns trying out all the different historical paths and alternate decisions and focus trees. What happens then? For China, Japan, and Germany, I definitely didn't play down all the historical paths and focus trees and alternate history scenarios, but to do so wouldn't probably be all that difficult, and in the time that it would take to do so, I fear that I wouldn't get my money's worth for $20. After everything has been said or done, I'd be wondering how the experience of Hearts of Iron 4 with Waking the Tiger has actually been made more dynamic and changing, and how the game has more longevity. So, my verdict. If you are a huge fan of Hearts of Iron 4 and play the game religiously, I'm going to recommend this expansion and you will probably not be disappointed. There's a lot of good stuff here for people who are heavily engrossed and satisfied by Hearts of Iron 4 and its gameplay and mechanics. 
Now, if you are not one of these people and are a casual Hearts of Iron 4 player or someone like me who is very critical of the game and doesn't enjoy playing it as much as something like Europa Universe Solace 4 or especially Victoria 2, I would hold off on this expansion and wait for a sale. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know if you'll be purchasing Waking the Tiger, and I will see you guys in the next video.